The 1959 Ford Fairlane Skyliner, coming up next on Monster Hobbies, What's in the Box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, Monster Hobbies fans. Welcome back to another great Monster Hobbies What's in the Box episode. Today we're going to be looking at the 1959 Ford with the retractable top. Uh, this is kind of interesting because when I went to high school, I actually had a high school mechanic teacher who had one of these in real life. But you probably want to know what this kit looks like. Now this kit was one of the 50th anniversary reissues from Ravel back in the day. And I managed to scoop up this kit for myself in my own private collection. So without further ado, let's go down and see what's in the box. It's 1957 and you are at the polo match with your great 1959 Ford Retractable. Whee! This is an awesome looking old model kit from Ravel. Although it's not as old as you think because guess what? There's a barcode there. <laughs> so this is a re-release. However, it is a cool looking old box with great artwork. It's even got the old part number on there and shows some of the other cars in the series. The Club de Mer, the Lincoln Futura, the Lincoln Continental, and on this side, the 57 Buick, the Chrysler, and the Cadillac Brougham. Ah, yes, wonderful. So I'm just going to open the box here and show you guys the wonderfulness of what's inside. You get, of course, your instruction sheet, the more modern, you know, translated into a million languages sheet of paper. Okay, so then this is a faithful reproduction of the original kit. You're getting some nice chrome here. And here we're really talking original. This is from the era of not understanding how to make a mold of a one-piece plastic body. So you've got a left side, a right side, and the tops and bottoms all glued together in the back end and all this kind of stuff. This is typical of a kit that was actually produced in the 50s. So very interesting when we open up that bag. And of course you get some tires. And now there's an issue with the kit. There's actually white wall inserts that go into these tires, which somehow I don't have. But uh, Ravel Monogram have a bunch of old kits that actually do have spare inserts on their white wall inserts. So I'm just going to try to see if I have enough of those in my own collection. So to begin with, we have the instruction sheet. And this is quite a cool thing. It folds out this way. Gives you a great history on it. Interesting facts about your 1959 Ford Fairlane 500 Skyliner. The 1959 Ford Fairlane 500 Skyliner is the only car in the world which has a mechanically retractable hardtop. Just the touch of a button changes it from a sturdy all-steel hardtop to a flashy sun-loving convertible. An example of the years ahead engineering, which has been a Ford byword since the early days of the automobile, the Fairlane 500 Skyliner was one of the cars awarded the gold medal for exceptional styling by the Comité Francais d'Elegance at the Brussels World Fair. Three different V8 engines are available, ranging from the 200 horsepower Thunderbird to the 300 horsepower Thunderbird Special. All models are on a 118 inch wheelbase chassis and have an overall length of 208 inches. A strong stiff box section frame with, a five, with five cross members is used, ensuring a rigid chassis. The Ravel model of the Fairlane 500 Skyliner duplicates with engineering accuracy, each and every detail of this fabulous car, including the retractable top. Copyright 1959 by Ravel, Inc., Venice, California. So yes, this is one of the original Ravel kits reproduced just for you. So the box said that this was the 50th anniversary of Ravel. So this kit came out in 2009, if you do your math. All right, so. Close this up for a minute and then reopen it. Woohoo! Now look at that exploded view of all your parts. <laughs> That's quite a thing. 
And of course there's the written explanation. So we get into the engine and of course you got the two piece left and right with the pulleys plug in the front. And then of course all the intake manifold, exhaust and carburetor. Air cleaner stuff goes on the top. Even has the call out colors so you can paint it accurate to the Ford of the era. Now look at this frame here, that's interesting. It's got, usually in the new model kits, the uh, transmission hump and carpet are all molded in as a one piece. These things on the top would be inside the body. But when they made this kit, of course, as I said, and you can see over here, you've got the one left and right hand side. So a lot of this stuff that's really weird on this is actually reinforcement for those panels. So anyway, carrying on with this, there's a little bucket box in the back. There's your interior. That was the storage for this car, which really limited down the trunk. But that's so that all the uh, folding top mechanisms can get folded down and line up beside that box. So here is the undercarriage. And they're saying, for a proper assembly, please drill a hole inside the shaft of the rim parts 22. There's those, whoops, <laughs> those white wall inserts that plug in that I'm missing for whatever reason. Uh, the undercarriage here, uh, the rear differential and spring assembly, plus the fuel tank all drop in. Oh wait, that's not the fuel tank, that's just another hump that would be molded in on the undercarriage on the new kits. Okay, so here's the dashboard and the tops of the front fenders gluing in with all the little accessory pieces for, of course, your uh, firewall. <laughs> then your radiator going in. So then we get into part number seven, how to assemble this body. So this is quite interesting based on how modern new model kits are all one piece bodies. This is actually a five piece, one, two, three, four piece body. So yeah, you glue your interior panels into the outer sides and then glue it all together until you get the one piece body, which then drops onto your, your chassis. It even shows you here how it clicks in, it clicks into that little groove there and floor panel. Okay, so then you get into number nine here. This is the actual operating mechanism for that retractable top. This would, of course, be the trunk lid. Then there's your top there. And the mechanism itself. The rear window that goes in. And that, I do believe... Okay, I'll need a little help in the comment section below. Because I can't remember if this was a solid piece of glass or just a piece of clear plastic that folded up. I don't know. You guys with the car will know. You guys with the car, please comment in the comments below. Anyway, there is the back end of the car being all glued together. The chrome bits, the tail lights, the V, and the rear bumper. And of course your front windshield going in. And then you've got your front end grille with the headlights and the hood clicking in there. The hood tilted forward which was another one of those revolutionary things back in the 50s. There's all your top popping into place. And the cool part is you get two figures with this kit. And I wish Ravel would make more figures for their kits. Same with AMT, the major plastic model manufacturers, because I build a lot of Warhammer figures and I really like painting and doing figures. And it gives a little more depth and action into the scene if you're doing dioramas. And if you guys have spare figures, please, Mail them over to me if you don't want them. Anyway, <laughs> all right, let's look at the actual plastic parts. Hey everybody, hope you're enjoying this great video. And if you do like these great unboxings and you want to support us, please come over and check out our Patreon account that's just been opened. It's a wonderful way to show your support for Monster Hobbies and to get some content that you may not actually find anywhere else on YouTube on my other channels. So please check out our Patreon account in the link below and we are going to be so happy to see you over there. Now let's go back to our great review. Let's start this review of the plastic components by looking at the chrome parts. 
So here we have our nice 1959 Ford grill. And of course you can see some nice detail in here of all the teeth. I know there's a bit of a reflection going on. It's chrome, please bear with me. <laughs> so here our next component is the front windshield housing. And right there are some nice windshield wipers. A couple little chrome pieces here and here. I'm not sure what they are. I have to look in the instructions. Probably emblems, I do believe. Anyway, here's our rear bumper. And if you can notice, in here it says 1959. So it's molded in like one of the cars you'd find in a museum or something, where they have a, a year license plate. Up here, we have the rear tail lights. You have to paint some transparent red on there to make them look like red plastic. These are the little side pieces that go on the roof. These are your no draft windows. There's a left one and a right one. Of course, this is a repeat of that again. Left hand and right hand, either way. And of course, these are your rear fender trim. Right and left, the big chrome V that goes on the rear of the car. And then down here we have our hubcaps and of course the brake drum backings. So I'll just show a couple of pictures of these parts up close and then we'll carry on with the body pieces. So here we have some of the green components. This of course being the uh, uh, driver's side of the Ford. And if you're looking for the passenger side, well, here it is. <laughs> so that's the mirror reverse. There's your radiator, your fan belt pulley assembly with the generator on the top, uh, the fan itself, some of the firewall com components, your steering wheel, the top of your engine, your two engine halves, the back of the seat, and I do believe this is part of the, um, the mechanism for the roof and whatnot. Next up, we've got three pieces on this part tree. There's the front of the female passenger sitting there the undercarriage of the car, and of course, the back of the car. Now, if we just turn this around, you guys can see the one piece undercarriage here, the nice exhaust pipes molded in, and of course, the tops of the, uh, the uh, spring shock towers, I believe. Well, okay, the spring sits there, this is the A-frame type suspension that was back in the 50s. Of course, this is when they started to do these perimeter type frames and with the X brace in the center. Now, on the more modern kits, this would actually be molded in here. But on this one, there's that really weird uh, green plastic piece that we saw in the instruction sheet that glues in here instead. Don't quite understand why they in 59, they didn't quite understand how to do this. But anyway, let's check out some of the other green parts. And on this part tree, we start to get into the retractable Ford bits. So here's the trunk lid. And I think that's the front part of the roof. And then here's all these little supports and things for the mechanism for the uh, retractable roof. And of course you got your steering column with your gear shift lever and your turn signal lever on there. Next up, we have the front transmission hump. Now this is an automatic because you only have your brake pedal here and your gas pedal there. And of course the inner top of the fenders up there. Now here we have our rear differential cover and this funny thing, which you will see what it is in a minute, 
and part of the mechanism and I do believe part of the drive shaft. Now let's turn this around and now you can see what this is. This is your trunk on the retractable. You put your stuff in there and then the mechanisms of the folding roof went off the sides of this thing. Now here on this part tree we have the hood and uh, the top of the fender. The windshield will come across here. This is the top of the dashboard. Of course you can see the nice battery detail and things in here. The engineers at Revell back in 1959 did at least make good attempts at molding in like the horns and everything else that's in your engine bay. And now the differential you can't really see because there's a the last piece that we looked at was the top. This is the bottom with the springs. So I'm just going to turn this around. And here you can see the nice spring detail and of course the bottom of the transmission, not uh, transmission, the, the differential. And uh, this is the part you're going to see when you turn the car upside down <laughs> when you want to look at the undercarriage. And here we have our interior panels, which actually this is a really good way to do them, to make them flat. Now, AMT and Ravel now are doing four-piece interiors um, just because of the high level of detail you can get in this. With the um, tub interiors of some of the other kits you're gonna see on this series, a lot of the side detail is weak because you're basically trying to make an interior in a fully enclosed tub like this sort of thing. So it's hard to get the sides in as good as you can when it's flat. Now I just realized something. I made a bit of a mistake on one of the parts that I just reviewed. This is the roof. This is the front piece of the roof that folds down and inward, I think. Yeah, folds down and inward when the roof retracts into the trunk. The other piece that I showed that looked like this is actually uh, one of the pieces that folds up and down when this becomes a convertible. Now, and then here we have the uh, the bottom of the A-frame suspension, which of course is going to be the top when you turn the car upside down. Now here's our seats, the front and the rear for our retractable. Of course, we've seen the back of the seat on another sprue. Now these have the nice upholstery pattern in there, as well as the stitches on the end. So you don't want to scrape these off. They're not seam lines. They're actually upholstery um, lines where it would be sewn together. And then, of course, here's the back of the driver. He's wearing a cap and a nice short sleeve shirt. Very good molding. So now we're looking at the driver of the vehicle and he's got this short sleeve shirt on. Now there's a lot of little lines in here for the shirt. So quite a lot of good detail, crisp detail on this. Of course he's got his arm out. So that would be wrapped around the female passenger <laughs> of the car. That's sort of how they drove back in those days. I know, because I got a 72 Oldsmobile with the bench seat, and me and my wife, I've driven like that with my arm around here. Um, probably not the safest way to drive, but <laughs> anyway, so here he is, and I do believe he's wearing some sunglasses. So now let's take a look at the loose pieces of the kit. Okay, so the first piece that I've got that's sort of loose in the box is the back of the female figure. She's got her hair in a ponytail, a very short ponytail in the back. Again, a lot of nice detail on this kit. She's wearing a belt that has some lines in it, you know, so it looks like a belt. <laughs> okay, the next piece is this strange piece that goes underneath the car. This, of course, is the frame rails and then the hump for the differential. And then on this side, it's 
just a bucket that you'll never see. Okay. Next up is this air cleaner. It's uh, fairly basic. You'll need to take your hobby knife and of course cut that piece off and then you can drill some holes in there and open it up so that it looks like the proper air intake. There's the correct little cutout for possibly the distributor cap and it plugs into the top of the car with this little X and pin. Uh, not the top of the car, but the top of the intake manifold. The top of the carburetor on your intake manifold. Anyway, there it is, loose in the box. Nice little air cleaner. The final green piece that was loose in the box is the dashboard. Now here you can see the buttons for the dashboard and of course the instrument panel. Very nice, there's the glove box and everything, which again, this is not too bad of a mold, considering that the top of the dashboard is actually molded to the top of the car. You can get in here and paint all this with chrome or use your bare metal foil into the gauge clusters and that, and uh, have your paint underneath without trying to, because usually the top of the dashboards, they had overhang, and I know with uh, like 57 Chevys and stuff, that overhang, it's very hard to paint the chrome inside here on your dashboard when you got this big other piece overhanging. You know, sometimes you get chrome on the overhang um, or silver paint. And that's always a pain, but it's nice that this has the top off. And I know some of the more modern AMT Round 2 kits are molded like this way as well. Now we move on to our clear parts. We have this nice rear window and our front wraparound windshield with the window glass for the no drafts molded in on the sides. And finally wrapping up with our four headlights for the front end. It's nice that Ravel put this in a small plastic bag to save scratches on the glass. Finally, we're gonna look at our rear tires. I'm gonna leave these in the bag just because they're kind of nicely stacked here. Uh, now, if you can see through the wrinkly glare, you actually have the sidewall tread, which is really nice. There's the regular tread on the tires, which is basically straight lines that run all the way around the outside of that tire. And here we've got a groove in the tires for that white wall insert that's missing out of this kit. Clicks in there. Now, I didn't notice any letters like Firestone or Goodyear or any of that, any of the brand names of tire companies. So I don't know if that's actually on the white walls or if the white walls are the basic monogram Ravel style white wall inserts that are, of course, also clear of any of those um, brands like Firestone or Goodyear, BF Goodrich, any of those guys. So. Basically, these are very simplistic wheels and tires. And that will conclude our review of the 1959 Ford Fairlane 500 Skyliner with retractable top by Ravel. Well, I hope you really enjoyed watching us unbox this great Ford Ranchero with a 50th anniversary. I put the band back on it. I know at the beginning of the video I I didn't have it on there, but I wanted to show you guys exactly how the box art looked because it's so wonderful. I love this old nostalgic box art because it's like a real artist's dream. And it looks like the old sales brochures of the era too. So this band, of course, as you can tell, really blocks a lot, no matter where you move this thing. <laughs> you know, there, it's, you know, so it's kind of nice, but eh, a little of a nuisance for a review. Anyway, if you love these reviews, you're going to love to see what comes up next week, and you don't want to miss that. So again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Click that notification bell, because next week we get into 1960, and that'll be a great, great year. We say goodbye to the 50s, and hello to the 60s. So anyway, again, let's get this thing up to 100 likes, and until next time... Either way you want, top up or down, you can have it in this great, great Ford.